Um, happy New Year to each and every one of you. And it's so, it's so good to have everyone online, even despite the fact that um, we are separated by a geographical barrier. But we thank God for technology that we are still able to do this. So I wanted to know that I consider this a privilege and I'm going to do um, my best to ensure that we all understand today. So like Tawa had said earlier, if you have any questions, I won't be able to see my screen because of course my phone is what I'm using to record myself. So if you have any questions, you can probably unmute yourself and call my attention to it. So without any uh, further waste of time, I would like us to go ahead. Yeah, so um, from the last um, tutorial that was held by Hazandu, we, I, I believe that he taught us a bit of Castiglianus system, um, how to plot BMD and SFD, um, the spring energy, which is U equals P squared L over 2AE. And we did um, Castiglianus theorem, DU, DE equals P, um, Engelson theorem, DU star, DP equals E, where U star represents complementary energy. So those are the things that we are going to be applying basically in this tutorial to ensure that um, I ran the thought on its application to process last week. So how will further by teaching on uh, its application to beam and frame. And if time permits us, I'm going to go into stiffness matrix and its application to process. Can you still hear me? Yes, sir. Clearly, sir. Clearly, sir. Yes, sir. Okay. All right, that's good. So, without any further waste of time, I'll just go ahead. Now, um, we know that Castiglianus term said that the U, the P, um, I mean, the U, the, yeah, the U, the P equals to the start on meal. Yeah, there's so much bruise on my hand, so. Yeah, so the UDP equals, um, the UDE equals P rather, or whatsoever you have. But let's leave that aside. We want to apply it, apply the formula. We know that for a, um, for a trust member, for a trust member, for a trust member, that is any member of the trust, we know that, energy U equals P squared L over 2 AE. Randall spoke about this last week. Now, so if we have several members of a trust, several members of a trust, that means um, the total strain energy will of course be summation P squared L over 2 AE. Now, I would just suggest that you don't need to write, but if you think you need to write, you can also write, but be as fast as possible. Because I'm trying to enlarge my handwriting so that you can be able to see it clearly from the phone. So since the, there's going to be a um, recording of this lesson, I believe that you, you might not need to write, just follow along and call my attention. So now, Castiglianus theorem is simply saying that the first partial derivative of the spring energy at a given point in, the, in whatever structure in which you want to find the displacement, that fourth partial derivative of the spring energy of the whole structure is equal to the deflection. So what this is saying is that, just like Randall thought last week, if we have a thrust like this, And we are required to find the um, displacement, let's say, at this point. If we have to find the displacement at this point. I want you to know that Castiglianus theorem is based on the virtual forces theorem. The virtual forces, when we talk about virtual forces, these are forces that are not real. But because they aid us in our solution, we try to use them. In the, I mean, in, in our solution to the problem, is not actually a real force, a virtual force, like the word virtual. So we just simply apply a virtual force, WY, at this point. 
Now, the total strain energy of the structure is summation p squared L over 2AE. Now, Castiglione's theorem is telling us that du dwy will be equal to d over, you know this is u, d over dwy of summation p squared L over 2AE. I'm just, for the sake of those that were not on last week, just a fresh, a, um, a brief refreshing of what they did last week. So let's bring this inside. We have D over DP of P squared, Abby, then DP, DWY, L over 2AE. These ones are constant. The length is constant. The area is constant. The um, Young modulus is constant. So we have summation um, 2p dot dp dwy dot l over 2ae. So that gives us, um, so we cancel two, of course. So we have summation, our, our deflection is equal to summation um, dp dwy which is the virtual force. The WY is the virtual force. Now, it's very possible that there is a force already acting here. If there was a force already acting here, replace, remove that force and put the WY there. But when you are calculating the deflection, you will now replace the WY back with the force that was initially there. Randall did that last week. That's why I said you need to go over the lecture that he had. And was it last week or even Thursday? So that's why I said um, you need to go over that one because I will not be majoring on this. I'm going to beam and friends. The PDWY, then we have um, PL over AE. So this is its application to its growth. Now, we are going to frame and beam. Can I clean the board? Hello. Yes, I'm with you, sir. Probably you can just wait for like 30 seconds and clean, sir. Okay, I think okay. you can. Yeah. All right, then. Wait, 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 please. Sorry. Yeah. Okay, okay, you can continue, sir. Thank you, sir. Okay. Friends and beans. So, um, because of our time, I don't want to be going through so much proofs. Of course, I'm going to be doing some proofs, but um, because of our time, I wouldn't want to go through so much proofs. It's not actually, it's not that I can't prove it but because of our time and because of your understanding, but I will do my best to prove them as well. Um, Frames and beams. So when we talk about, you know, the application of class Ghanaian theorem is that the strain energy for the whole structure, you find the first partial derivative at that point in which it is required. So if we have frame and beam, there is a need for us to be able to calculate what the total strain energy for a frame and beam system is. So now, for a frame and beam system, the U, the total strain energy is integral of M squared over 2EI dot dx. I believe we are following, right? From zero to whatever here. So this is the strain energy for a frame and beam system. So what you do is for each of the members, you apply this. When, once you apply for each, you now sum them up together to get the total strain energy for the whole structure. So now let's now apply Castiglione's theorem. Castiglione's theorem says that what? Du, D, W, Y, where wy is the 
virtual force we are applying. So if we have this now, that means we have D over DWY, integral of from zero to L, M squared over two E high, the X. So that becomes D over the M of M squared. What I'm doing here, D over the WY, I'm just applying Shane's rule. D over the WY is the same thing as D over the M times the M over the WY. So we have integral from zero to L, M squared, then the M, the WY, I mean, so we have one over two E i left. One over two E i the x. So that will give us integral of from zero to hell, the m, the w y of uh, this is what two m over two e high dot the x. So that becomes integral of from zero to L, um, the M over the WY. M is the moment in the structure and the WY is the virtual force. Don't forget the virtual force we are applying. So, so we cancel to M over E high the X. So this will give us the deflection for a beam system. I'm using Y to represent deflection. Where Y is deflection, M is moment, and WY is a virtual force. Yes. So, without any further waste of time, let's just delve into um, calculation related to um, applications of classic learning theorem to beams and frames. So the step is very simple, very, very simple. It just involves four steps. Number one, you place a force WY on the point on the beam or frame in the direction of the desired displacement. So if your desired displacement is in the horizontal direction, your um, your virtual force will be pointed in the horizontal direction. If it's in the vertical direction, your virtual force will be directed in the what? Vertical direction. So that's the first step. The other step is establish appropriate x coordinates, then calculate the internal moment as a function of um, the virtual force. Then finally, you apply the Castiglione theorem and you'll be good. So instead of just Setting the story, let's have an example. Like I said, if you are having any difficulty, please let Taiwan know, or you can unmute yourself and tell me. Are you still with me? Johnson, Baba. Yeah, with you. Yes, sir. All right. So the MWY M over here, I did. I don't know why I can't see. Someone is saying something. You can't see the board. You should be able to see. Like it's blank. It's blank. You can see the board. You can see the board. It's for using in drugs. Are you using it? Emmanuel, reach out to me on WhatsApp. All right, good. So let's have an example. This is an example from our class notes, so I'm not making it up. So the question is, find the reaction at the probed support. This is what we call probed support. Find the reaction at the probed support. If this is load Q, Kilonewton 
per meter. And we have E high, we have L. Good. So the first thing you need to do is what? Place your um, virtual force at the point of the required deflection. Now, we are requiring, I mean, we are required to get um, a reaction at this point. So, of course, we need to apply a virtual force at that point. So, if we do that, let's add that now. So, let's say we apply a virtual force WY at this point. WY. So, the next step is to what? The next step is to find the moment of the old system. So, from this end, we have the distance from here to here is X. Now, let's take our um, um, moment to be acting in this direction. If the board is too off, tell me so that I can reduce the number of things on the board. So, this will be our MX. So the next thing to do is to find this MX. You know, like I said, the first step, apply a virtual force. The second step, um, establish the appropriate X coordinate, which we did. And then the next step is to what? Um, calculate your internal moment. So let's do that now. If we are finding moment at this point, let's say we are taking summation M about section XX. Section XX. Summation M is equal to zero. So WY times X AB minus QX squared over two, then minus MX is Sorry, equal question, to zero. Question, sir. Question, sir. Okay. Um, Randu, the last class, he said um, Mr. Ojoku prefers us with two clockwise as negative and anticlockwise as positive. But now we are, we are sticking to our normal um, understanding of. Okay. You could say anticlockwise as what? Positive. Positive, yes. Anticlockwise, positive. That, that... Okay. Good. Okay, good. Let's stick to that. That's the same convention that Ojoku is. Um, it's fine. So let's. And let's use that. Let's use that. So someone would love to know where you are and taking your moment about, sir. Uh, yes, but let's just we are taking moment about section XX. Taking moment about XX. We are trying to get the bending moment at section XX. This is the section. Sorry, you know I had a question. Oh, all right. The direction that you applied WI, was that given in the question? No, it's not. So how do you know what direction is to we be are, applied? In? Reaction will be... Okay, up. so we are... The reaction will be acting upward. I believe you know okay. that. Okay, yes. Although, although in some cases it could act downward, but that does not matter. If you choose to apply it upward or downward, it doesn't matter. The solution no, will correct itself at the end of the day. That's not yes. what I'm asking. The I'm saying, how do you know that it's vert vertical, not ver um, horizontal? And then what I'm saying. Relax, oh, relax, okay. Relax. Now, yes, it's a regular support, and we are trying to obtain the reaction at this point, this is the regular support, there's going to be only one, for a regular support, there's going to be only one um, force acting there. If it were to be this kind of support, then that's when we have this and we have this. So it's not going to be horizontal, of course, it's going to be vertical. Do you understand? Yes. Oh, good. May I know your name? Because that voice does not sound familiar. It's Toro. Right, so if you speak not to speak. Oh, Togo. Wow. <laughs> All right. So let's move on. So taking moments about SX, clockwise to be, I mean, anti-clockwise to be positive. So that means this to be minus. Then this also, the moment of this UD here will be plus. Then um, plus MX. I believe that that is understood. 
Yes, sir. Okay. So that means our MF will be equal to um, move this year F W U Y minus Q X squared over two. So these are our moment equations for the structure. Now there is no break in um, in the system. What I mean by that is that if we had a force acting here, then there's going to be two bending moments involved. I'm going to find the bending moment for this first part and find the bending moment for this second part. For so now, it's just a UDL tool house. So that's why this one is enough to work for the whole length of the cantilever beam. So let's take that. This is the MX. So the next thing is to what? Apply Castiglianus theorem. Castiglianus theorem is what? Um, summation D. You want it to come again, sir? Okay. 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 Johnson, can you explain that that um, previous line you just said about something, one moment, one force? I didn't really get it, please. Oh, okay. Thank yeah. you. Actually, we are going yeah. to do an example. We are going to do an example of that actually. So you can just wait. We'll do an example on that. Is that okay? Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. Thank you. Um, so the M, the W, Y, not this one. This one is for process. So the M, the W, Y, I'm M over E high. The x. So this is what we are going to apply. So the um this will be our y deflection. Now, but I wanted to know that the deflection at this point is equal to zero. Deflection here is also equal to zero. So that's why you can after after solving this, is this supposed to be summation or integration? This is supposed to be integration, integration of from zero to L. So let's do that now. We have the M, the W, Y will be equal to X. This will go. So we get um, integral of from zero to L, the M, the W, Y, which is X times M over E, I. What is M? This is our M. So we have X. Now, you know, I said when you're applying the Cassegrain's theorem, you need to remove that WY back with the force that you want to calculate at that point. So, since we are required to calculate the reaction at this point, let's just say that our reaction at that point is R. So, that means you replace WY with R. A virtual force is an imaginary force, it's not real. We just need it for the solution of what we are trying to do. So, now, since we are now applying the Cassegrain theorem proper, we remove the WY and replace it with um, the actual reaction that we want there. So we have XR, R for the reaction, minus Q X squared over two, then divided by EI from zero to health. So let's integrate. Integral from zero to L. Yes. X squared R one over E high minus Q X cube over two. Forgot the dx. The x. So that gives us one over E high. Um. So let's integrate. S cube R over three minus qx raised to power four over eight from zero to L. So don't forget it to be zero. Zero will be equal to, we can just remove the one over here. So we have L cube R over three minus QL raised to the power four over eight 
is equal to zero. Now we are looking for what R. So you can move on. Can I clean this part? Yes, sir. You can. Well, it, it, it's available as a video, so you can just check back later. So that means L cube hal over three is equal to QL raised to the power four over eight. So our uh, hal will be equal to QL raised to the power four over, I believe we didn't miss anything. Please let me know. Um, eight L cube R. Oh, sorry. Eight L cube. So that becomes R is equal to three QL over eight. So that's the reaction at that probe support. Exactly, before we quickly move into the next question. Please, Johnson, every deflection at yes. um, the roller support, is it always zero? Yes, at this point. Yes, and at the every deflection support is going, to, is going to be zero. Yes, it's going okay. to be zero. Thank you. As far as we are applying the Castellanus theorem, um, the few questions I've solved, I've discovered that, I mean, they've been zero. You understand? Except if the white stupid. And what we used to have as a support, as support is what? Settlement. Abi? So if, if, if that occurs, I believe that yes. it will be told to us that this is it, that there is a settlement of this at that point, and the deflection day will not be equated to this. Do you understand? Yes, thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, so let's go to the next question. Can I clean the board? I believe so. <clears throat> so this one, it involves a value now. We are dealing with a value. And it's similar to the previous question, but it's in two parts. So the first part is just the previous one. And the second part is the one where we have to apply a concentrated load. So we have B, A, and this is four meters. This is, our, this is the test question actually. Is from um, the previous year test, the set before us. This is their test. So now, um, the question is: Adopt any of the known energy is a, is a part A, is a part B. Adopt any of the known energy methods to determine the propelling force R of the beam. Propelling force is the force at this point um, of the beam shown in Figure Q2. Hence, draw BMD and SFD. Then the moment diagram and check of diagram, I don't believe we should be doing that now because I believe that at this point, um, basically most of us should be able to close the BMD and FFD by ourselves. Please, I'm not trying to um, try to make anyone feel bad or anything, but I believe that if we are doing that now, we are not going to be able to move very fast. So that's why I'll just solve it. Then you close the BMD by yourself. Okay, so we are required to find the word the reaction at this point. So as usual, the first step is what? Apply your, um, your virtual force, let's call it WY, so, and try to get the moment. Now, I'm sure you must be noticing as much as possible, I'm trying to run away from the fifth end. Why is that? It used to make the work quite complex. So it's better you just start taking your moment from the um, concentrated, I mean, from the simply supported end. So um, the time, the, um, state your X coordinates. So we are taking our X to begin from here and going this way. In the other example, we started from here because the poop was here and it went this way. So now we are taking it from here and we are going this way. So as usual, summation M is equal to what? Anticlockwise is positive, is equal to what? Zero. 
So if that happens, that means that what? Minus X W Y plus 20 X squared over two. This also was positive plus M X. Oh, negative rather. Anticlockwise is this positive. If you are confused, let me know. It's equal to zero. So, anticlockwise is positive. Plus x to the y minus 20 x to the y minus nx is equal to zero. So, nx is equal to x to the y minus 10x squared. These are moment equations. So, the next Want to leave. So let's do that now. I'm sorry, Johnson. Again? Yes. Hello, Johnson. I'm listening to um, the X W Y. Where did it come from? The M. Um, what's that Castellan sign again? The M W Y from zero to L M over E high the L. The U Y is equal to X. So that will be equal to from zero to L, X times, what is in X W Y minus 10 X squared dot DX over EI. I believe we are following. Now, zero to L, what is L? L is four from zero to four. So you can just remove the L and put four. Don't forget this to be equal to zero. Zero to be equal to um, integral of from zero to four x squared w y. Now, instead of going through all this first, um, I could just use r equals three q l over eight, which I did in the previous example. But then, if it's a new question, and I mean we didn't do that r equals three q l over eight part of it. It's very important for you to show all this. But if the one that we did before was just a part of the question, you don't have to go through the stress of taking using the actual value. I can just say three times 20 times four divided by eight. That will give me the answer, but let's move on. Minus 10 X cubed, the X, one over EI. So zero is equal to S cube. Now I'm supposed to have replaced the y, w, y with R. So X cube R over 3 minus 10 X to the power 4 over 8, I think, from 0 to 4. So 0 to be equal to 64 R over 3 minus 10 times 4 to the power 4 over it. So R will be equal to, I will move the one over high because if we I come and multiply zero, it will be zero. So let's just calculate our R directly. 10 times four is to our four divided by eight times three divided by 64. So that's 16. I hope we have not made a mistake now. Um, hello, Johnson. Um, is it not so yes. 10 divided by 4? Thank you very much. Uh, 10 divided by 4. I was, uh, I'm already thinking, yes, I'm already thinking we made a mistake. So, so divided by 4. So, let's calculate that. So, I got 15 kilonewtons. So, if it is divided by 4, then it should be times 2. So, that's 30 kilonewtons. 
R equals 30 kilonewton. So this is it. Now, once you have gotten R equals 30 kilonewton, you should just go ahead, find the moment at this end, and then I believe we can do that now. Or do I need to do it? There is no response here. Hello. Sorry. Hello. Sorry, what was the question again, please? Yes. I said, I believe, okay, so since we have gotten past the kilonewton now, we can calculate the moment at this end with this past kilonewton for our hour. So you just put it here. 30 times 4, that's 120, minus 10 times 4 squared. 30 times 4 minus 10 times 4 squared. So that's minus 40 kilonewton meter. So the moment at this point is, since we are taking our um, anti-clockwise to be positive, and we got minus 40. So that means a moment to be 40 kilonewton meter clockwise, right? It should be... Do you understand? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Mr. Johnson. Uh, so, Tolu would love to know why you replace W by R. Can you hear me? Okay. It, it, yes, I, I, I heard you. Actually, if you had gone through the previous lecture, the idea is that we are applying a virtual force WY at a point where we are required to calculate deflection. I hope the noise from this end is not getting penetrated to the end. No, it's no, fine, it's, it's fine. Yeah, cool. It's fine. Okay. okay. So, um, so the idea is, at the point where you are required to, you are required to get the deflection, you apply a vector for W at that point. Now, if there was a fork at that point, this is what I'm saying. I'll just take you, um, a little bit back into process. I believe I can clean this, right? Let me clean this part. Oh, yes, the guy clean it. So we have a force like this. And there's a 10 kilometer force acting here. Let's say 20 kilonewton force acting here, and let's say 50 kilonewton force acting here. Now, we are required to find the deflection at this point of 10 kilonewton. You have to replace this 10 kilonewton with WY, which is your virtual force. So when you begin to apply the Castellanian theorem, you will now remember that there was a force there, which is 10 kilonewton and you replace it. But if there was no force here, and you are required to calculate the deflection, your WY, when you are applying the Castellani theorem, will be equal to zero. You understand? Now, this one, we are calculating the reaction at this point. We know there is a reaction there. But so that we can apply the Castellani theorem, we need to apply a, a, a virtual force, WY. So that's why we apply WY, and later on, we replace it with R. I believe that should answer the question. Is that clear to me? Very clear, sir. Very clear, sir. Oh, thank God. So let's, um, let's move on to the part two of the question. The part two of the question is saying, okay, let us replace the UDL with a point load. A point load that is acting at the middle of the beam. So we have a point load like this. This is the beam. We have a point load of 80 kilonewtons. So we said, compute R if the UDL force is replaced with a point load of 80 kilonewtons at the center. Now, if we replace the point load with 80 kilonewtons, that means that, like I said earlier, we are going to find two moments. One will be M1 for this section of the beam, and the other will be what? M2 for this section 
of the day. Now, there are two approaches to this. Why is it like this? The reason it's like this is because the um, the the um, the postulate or the, the theory by Pasquiliano is that you find the first partial derivative of um, the total strain energy of the system. First partial derivative with respect to the virtual force of the total strain energy. So that means that you find the strain energy of this section, you find the strain energy of this section, you add them together. Apply Castiglianian theorem on that. That will give you whatever you are looking for. So let's read this way. There are two approaches to solve this, but I will, I will try to use the one that our lecturer will most likely appreciate. So let's take from here. For this first section, our F, for this second section, our F commences also. So, um, maybe I should sketch it out so that you can see what I'm saying. I'll try to do that. X, X. So, this is A, this is B. Let's call this C. So, if we are considering section CB, that means we are going to have a WY this way and a F and a moment M1. You understand? We are finding the moment within this segment. So if we apply our summation, summation M taken as a clockwise to be positive will be equal to zero. So that means that F W Y minus M one is equal to what? Zero. So So we can say that M1 is equal to F W Y. Remember, we will need to find the M W when we are applying the Castiglianian term. So we can say the M1 the W Y is equal to F. So we have this on ground. So let's consider section from A to B. So um, let's draw it out. Am I even supposed to use the section? I'm not supposed to use this term section. Let's need to do a section ball. I believe you understand what I'm trying to say. CD, AD. AT, kilonewton, WY. Now, this is a section from ear to ear is F. And the ear is what? Q. I believe you have not forgotten that. Okay, I didn't put it there. The total, okay, it was in the previous question now. Total length is four meters. This is two meters. This is two meters. So, so we find the moment M2. We are taking anti clockwise to be positive. So that means summation M. is equal to zero. So that means X W Y minus A T times X minus U. Are you following? Then this yes, is what sir. clockwise minus M T. A question. M T is equal to x w y minus a t into bracket x minus two. 
So she used that thing that from the point next for the two sections. So we have that. So, so what do we need to do next? Apply this one, the M2, the WY is equal to, is still the same thing as what? X. So now let's apply a Castiglianos theorem. There's ATX there. I believe I can clean the book. There's ATX minus two. There's what? Minus ATX. Yes. It's X uh, minus eight. X is a constant thing. Uh, X is a... This is X minus 80, not X. Uh, it's X minus 80. No, 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 no. Um, F, F is a constant. Okay, okay, w yes, yes, yes. yes, 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 yes. To w, -Y. w, Y. Yes, yes, exactly. Yes, so this would be a constant in this case. Yeah. So let's move on. So the M to the W, Y, X. So what we now do is what? Find the, um, apply the Cartesian term for both part of it and sum it together. So let's do that. Integral of zero to two for this first part, zero to two. Okay, let me first take the formula. The M, the W, Y from zero to L, M over E I the X. So we have integral of from zero to two, the M1, the W Y. The M1, the W Y is what? X. Now, what is M M1? I've cleaned it, but I think that is X W Y. I believe I'm correct. So X W Y over E I. Now, this second part is very tricky. And you have to pay a lot of attention at this point. There can be a temptation to say, since we are considering this part of it, we want to sum the free energy of this two parts. We want to sum it together. We can now say that, OK, let me do 0 to 2. I mean, 0 to 4 or 0 to 2. Now, this would be absolutely wrong if you do 0 to 4. If you are doing 0 to 4, that is like you are taking this section, and you are taking this section, and you are taking this section again, and adding them together. But our second moment equation is from, um, it started from here, and we are able to calculate the moment at this section of the beam. So. If you are going to apply this now, you are considering from here to here. Our origin is this point zero, but since we are considering from here to here, this is beginning from two and it's ending at four. So instead of having zero to two, it's going to be from two to four. Then you now apply the M to the WY, which is X times what we have here. I want to clean this. I believe I'm permitted to do so. Yes, sir. So X W Y minus 80 into bracket X minus two over E I. Don't forget to be equal to zero. So Let's integrate. Now, I told you that what you replace WY with R. So you can do that now. We have how. I'm sure some of you will be wondering okay, if we are having, if we have to replace it, then why was it there in the first place? The reason it was there is because so that you can obtain that DM, the WY, and use it inside of it. So zero is equal to, this will be x squared r. I will remove the one over ei. So x squared r, that becomes x cube r over three, adding from zero to two, 
plus this would be x squared r also that's x cube r over three from two to four then minus 80 x squared minus 80 x squared that's minus 80 x cubed over three then plus 160 x that becomes plus 160 x squared over two so this also is from uh, two to four So let's put them inside. Zero is equal to eight r over three plus four cubed minus two cubed. I believe you know this is now to power. It's not just the power, is the lower and upper limit of integration or boundaries. So 40 minus 50 r over 3, then minus 80 into bracket. Four cube minus 50 over 3 plus 150 over 2, that's what 80. 80 into bracket. Four squared minus two squared. So um, we have zero is equal to eight r over three. Four cube is sixty-four. Sixty-four minus eight. That's so we have a point plus fifty-six r over three minus. Let's find what that is. <laughs> Four sixty minus fifty minus fifty more than three. So we have minus four four eight zero over three. Then eighty into bracket four squared minus two squared. So it's plus nine sixty is equal to zero. Pardon me for a second, please. Okay, so we have 64 R over three will be equal to 4480 over three minus 960. So R will be equal to 4480 divided by three minus 960 times three divided by 64. So R is equal to what? 25 kilo Newton. Do we understand? Do we understand? Yes, sir. Okay, so can I post it? Any question? Sir Johnson. Yes, sir. Hello, sir. Yes, I can hear you. All right, sir. Before you commence, I will, I would love to share a poll to probably ascertain that virtually everyone are following me because I will be able to express. Okay, so you can take a break, Abby. I want to share a pool on the screen. I think I think that's why. Just to start with. Seven minutes. Oh, no. 
No, just about 30 seconds a day about it. Uh, Um, only 53 percent don't don't click or beg now I just repeat so we can move on okay all right I think I think this is this is I think, the board, I, no, I, I think this is good I think we can move on we have it just one one person that is having difficulty you can reach out to me by DM so that we can actually sort it out later. all right thank you oh, okay. Let's go to point. You can move on, sir. Um, so it's still an example from class we are going to do, but I won't be using the one in which the, the one who, I mean, which has no value. I'm going to be using the one that has a value. Um, the question that was given to us in class, let me try to locate it. Okay, so um, we are required to find, the demand did not put a question there, but we are required to find a, um, horizontal force H, horizontal force H, that's what I think we are required to find. So if we are applying, although from normal thinking, I believe that in this case, there shouldn't be any horizontal force H because this is a thin support. But probably one of them is, um, but what, what we have in the note is that this is the structure and we're trying to find horizontal force. So who can tell me what kind of form is it? Okay, let me just say this. Is it symmetrical or unsymmetrical? Hello? It seems like it's a symmetrical form. 
Okay. It's symmetrical. It's symmetrical. Okay, it's symmetrical. The load is the same. If we divide this into two, we have the same support. We have a similar support at this end. If we divide it into two, the support here and the support here is the same. But if we had um, um, a kind of support like this at this end, and this is no longer symmetrical because the supports are not the same. Yeah. I believe we did that in year four. Um, year four structural analysis. Yeah. That be no, 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 we did not. Do. Do. We did. Uh, I still remember. We did. Are you arguing with Johnson? We did. He said we did. We did. What's wrong with oh, you? Oh, man, not there. And you can just check the slide, the, the year four slide. You will see the condition for, uh, is this symmetricity, we'll call it now. Uh, I don't think there's anyone like that. So it's easy. This, um, the condition for it to be symmetrical or asymmetrical. So let's move on. This is four meters, and this is three meters. Let me be sure that we have the right question. Okay, so let's comment. Now, in this case, we are still applying the same principle. The principle is that we find the same energy for each of the members. If you can find the same energy for the, each of the members, you put out them together and you apply, I mean, to obtain the total strain energy for the whole structure, then you apply the um, um, Cartesian theorem to that total strain energy that you have obtained. So now, you need to find the same energy here, here, and here. So let's do that. We, we apply uh, H like this. If there is an H here, of course, there should be a counterbalancing H here. Summation Fx is equal to zero. So we have, um, we can calculate this, but we don't even need it actually. But let's, if we need it, let's, but we can calculate it 20 per meter, 20 times 4, 80. 80 divided by 2, they will share it equally because it's a symmetrical beam. So 40, 40. So let's now consider section. Take a section across this place, a section across this place, and a section across this place. Why are we doing this? So that we can obtain the moment equation for each of them. It's from the moment equation that we can now apply the Cassiano theorem. So let's call this one Y1. Because they are symmetrical, um, this one, both of them will be giving us the same result, but let's still separate them. Y2, and let's call this X. So I think this is A, B, C, D. So let's consider um, member AC. Although it's not member AC, so I'm just using it so that you can be able to um, get what it is. So we have um, we have this. There will be a moment here. M1, M2, M3. So let's move on. Um, so from here to here would be Y1. Remember AC. So let's find the uh, moment. Let's say this is Y1. Y1. As in section Y1, Y1. Then this is section Y2, Y2. And this is section XX. So let's take it like that. So we now have H at this point. So summation M is equal to what? Zero. So that means that what? We are taking anticlockwise to be positive. So that means plus H Y1 minus M1 is equal to zero. Now, I know you must, you must be wondering why is positive not doing anything there? It's going to do something when we get to this part. But in this part, it's just an axial force. It can contribute to the moment in this 
part of it, I mean, in the moment in the section of the beam, I mean, what is this part called now? In the member, so let's take it like that, in the member, HY1 minus M1 is equal to zero. So we have M1 equals HY1. So all we need to do now is um, the M1, the H will be equal to what? Y1, because we are going to need it when we are applying um, the Cartesian theorem. The M1, the H equals Y1. So let's move to the second part. I want to clean the board. Am I permitted? Yes, sir. You can't. Okay. Now, you have to see attention here so that you won't be confused. When we separate this beam into three, I mean, these members into three, I mean, this structure into the three members that make it up. We have member one, member two, member three. If 40 kN is acting here, then 40 kN must be acting downward on it when you separate it. If 40 kN is acting downward on it, then 40 kN must be acting upward on this um, member. So we are going to have something like this. Forty kilonewton. Now, apart from that, if we have each, the moment at this end will be what minus h sin, minus h times y, h times y in the world and the clockwise direction. So, to be able to counterbalance it, there must be another h y one acting on this same member to counterbalance it downward. Now, if there is a if there is um, a moment HY1 acting on this one, then there must be an HY1 acting on this one to neutralize the effect of, I, I believe you get what I'm saying, is something you have done before, but if you don't understand, tell me so that I can, re I can explain it again. So if HY from here to here is not HY, it's H times three. Y1 is just a section of it. So if we have the moment, find the moment at this, uh, the moment at this point, would be what the most to counterbalance is will be H times three. So we have three H moment here. If three H moment is acting on member AC, then there must be a three H moment acting on member CB. So we have three H. I think this marker is misbehaving. Let me change. So we have three H. Then um 20 kilonewton per meter, and we have M2. So our X. So the next thing is what? Obtain the moment. Um, summation M anticlockwise is positive equals zero. So anticlockwise is positive. So this three H will be positive. 3h, this clockwise, minus 40x, minus 40x, then plus 20 times x squared all over 2. Abi, then anticlockwise m2 also, m2 is equal to 0. So that means our m2 will be equal to 40x minus 3h, Abi, minus 10x squared. Now, um, this third part of it, no, let's do it. Huh? I would have loved us to just add them together and to give us the same thing. So the next thing is to find the m to the h. So that will be what? Minus 3, not this. So let's go to the third part. Member um, member B D. So we are going to have this H Y two. 
M, M three. I wish the following. Hello. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. We are following. Oh, my item is not so wrong. It's manageable, Abby. Let's move on. I want to clean this, but I might need it later. Let me not turn it. I think I have it in my. I don't clean it, sir, for better explanation when you are referring to it. I should not clean it, Abby. Yes, so that when you are referring to it as you are serving. It's easier to understand that way. Okay, well, I'm using a very small board. Let's see how to do that. Yeah, I guess because that's 40x minus 3h minus 10x squared. Let me just carve out a little part here. So, hy2 plus m3, hy2 plus m3. Is equal to oh maybe anticlockwise is positive already so minus h y two minus m three is equal to zero so m three is equal to minus h y two so we have to find the m three the h plus minus Y two. So let's apply Castiglianus now. I'll have to clean this. Um, so integral of for member A B. I want to check the figure, so that's what I'm trying to do. Member AC. So member AC, we have um, integral of from zero to L, um, the M, the H dot, um, what would we have? M over E high is going to be dy now, dy1. So that becomes integral of from zero to H is three meters, zero to three meters. The M, the H, I think we calculated that the other time. Oh, this is the small body. Really, really. So that's My minus Y. Eh? Is Y1, Abby? Y1, okay. Y1. Y1. If you can just tell me, if you, if you, oh, thank you. If you look down, just tell me, thank you. Y1 times M, our M is what? HY1, Abby. Yes, 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 yes. Okay, okay, okay. E high, the Y1, then plus the second part of it, integral of from zero, to four was, uh, so the M to the H is minus three times what we have here, 40 X minus three H minus 10 X squared. Then the third part also, Zero to three. Over e plus integral of minus y two times um, minus h y two dot d y two. This let's just put the x here.
so the white two over e high. So if you look at this now, you see that both of them will still give us the same thing at the end of the day. So you could just do two times this, since they are symmetrical. So now I'm just trying to show you this so that you can know the reason if I had multiplied it by two and used it like that. So I want to clean this now. Okay, so we move to HY1 squared. I'm going to remove, this is going to be equal to zero, the deflection. We are applying the, um, the Castiglianos now. So we integrate this, I'm going to integrate it straight. Um, now, HY1 cubed over this, HY1 squared. That's HY1 cubed over three from zero to three then minus three times 40 X, that's 120 X. So we have 120 X squared over two from zero to four. Let me use plus. Minus three times minus three h, that's plus nine h. So if you integrate plus nine h dx, we are going to have nine h x. So plus nine h x from zero to four. Minus three times minus ten. Um, that's um thirty thirty x squared. So we have plus thirty x cubed over three from zero to four. And as y times one, that's y two squared. So we have h y two cube, just like this one, plus h y two cube over three from zero to three, all equal to zero. So let's put it inside. That's three cube, that's 27 h, over three. So we have 27 H over three minus 120 into bracket four squared over two plus nine H times four, that's the six H, then plus 30 times four cube over three plus three cube, that's two and seven H over three is equal to zero. So twenty seven H over three, that's nine H, nine H plus nine H, it's an H. It's an H plus this H, so that should give us 54H. So we have 54H, then let's do this on calculator. So that gives us um, 320, which I'm afraid is wrong. Let me check on the other. Justin, please, I'm very sorry to take yeah. us back, but do you mind if you actually explain that second part? 
that second one. part. The um, this in the horizontal the, the portion moment. that we got. Yes, how we got that moment equation. I'm not so like comfortable on that. I'm so sorry to drag everybody back. Just that part. Actually. Are you talking about member? Member. Member CD. Member CD. Oh, oh, okay. Yes, I will go back to it now. Let me just. Let me just check this right here. Okay, I think we're on track, it's correct. So, it is 320 over 64. 320 is 160, 160 over 27 kilonewtons. So that is the force we are required to get. So, uh, I will go back to what he is asking for now. Um, but can I clean this? Can I clean this? Yes. So let's have that um, structure again. 20 kilonewton per meter. I've divided this into three parts now. This 40 kilonewton. 40 kilonewton must also act down here to maintain equilibrium on this member. Now, what the community is acting here, what the community must act up here also. Forty kilonewton. This also must act down. Forty kilonewton here. Only forty kilonewton here to push it up also. Good. So now there is a moment we have H. The height is three meters. If, if, I mean, the moment at this point will be equal to H times three. Now, this is what anti-clockwise, then to counterbalance it, there must be a clockwise. Yeah? The moment at this point is H times three. Abi, say, are you following? Oh, yes, yes. I understand this now. I just get, I just understand how you go that three H now. So this three h, h times three meters. Then since this is clockwise here, this must be what anti-clockwise here. So what we just did, take a section and find your m two. So that is it. Do we Thank you very much. Understand? Yes, you're welcome. So we are moving to fitness matrix method now. So you can just rest for five minutes. Our time is almost over here, but let's try to run it. Question, please, I have a question. Just to okay. confirm. If we want to find the moment, we can okay. use the moment equations we derived, right, to get the moment for each section. Yeah, definitely, yes, 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 you can. Those moment equations that we are um, applying the cascading um, on, yes, you can use it. Yes, we can use it. Yes, yes, you can use it, you can use it. Thank you. 
So we are moving now. Please, I'm very sorry. I have to be at the meeting by five o'clock. So I'll do my best to watch the SMM, which is Business Matters Method, so that we can try to cover as much as possible. Okay, so are we good? Yes, sir. All right, so business matrix method. So um, these are two methods of matrix analysis. You know, when we use matrix analysis in um, in structural analysis, there are two kinds of methods that you can use. You can either use the um, fitness matrix method, which is the same thing as displacement or deflection method, or you use the flexibility matrix method. Flexibility method is the same thing as the first method. So there are a few advantages of um, fitness matrix method over the flexibility matrix method. And number one is that the stiffness matrix method enables you to calculate both force and displacement. Whereas flexibility method only allows you to calculate a force, but the displacement calculation is very complex. For so SMM is quite straightforward. Then it uses the same approach for statically determinate and indeterminate. That is the stiffness matrix method uses the same approach for the determinate and indeterminate structures, but flexibility matrix method, the kind of method that we, the kind of um, analysis which we use for um, a determinate structure will be different from that of indeterminate structure. So these are basically the advantages. So we'll just go into the theory. Now I'm going to ask you a few questions so that we can, can determine our speed. There are some proofs that we need to do. Without the proofs, you will not be able to understand the application. So should we go into the post or we should just go into the application? Let's go into the go into the proof. Proof, I beg, proof. Okay. So let's move on. So let's say we have a structure like this. <clears throat> I'm applying it to thrust. To thrust, not to, it can be applied to beams, it can be applied to frame, but we are applying it to thrust. Application. So let's assume that is a thrust member. And we have, um, we need to have this degree of freedom. So this one, two, three, four. One, two, three, four. So now the idea is that we apply a unit displacement, and by applying that unit displacement, we find its effect on um, the point of application and the effect which it has on other degrees of freedom also. So we have this is one, two, 
and this is three, four. So let's start from here. Let's apply a unit displacement at this point. I want you to remember from around this class that for a thrust member, F is equal to what? A, E, E, E over L. Abi? Sigma A, oh, sorry. Yes. Um, first is Sigma A, Abi? And then um, Sigma is the same thing as Young modulus times um, strain, but strain is what extension over length. So that's how it came about this formula. I believe we understand that. I believe that's the something we can get easily. So let's move on. Um, a one unit displacement. If we apply a one unit displacement on this, we are going to find its effect on this one. Now, the effect will be called K11. Now, the effect that it will have on this one will be called K2 due to one. K1 due to one, K2 due to one, K3 due to one, and K4 due to one. So, I'm just going to do two parts of it then um, because of our time, I will just give us the final form of the formula. You can try to do it by yourself. In, or you can just take the um, CG note. From there, I, I picked it from. So, so that you can see time. Here to one. Um, so what will happen here? If we want, this is one. If we replace E with one, that means K11 will be equal to AE times one over L. That's what, AE over L. Now, that we applied a unit displacement in the horizontal direction, please tell me, will it have an effect on the vertical direction? No. So automatically, we know that K21 will be equal to zero, and K41 will be equal to zero. But this one, if we apply a displacement around it uh, like this, and then we obtain the stiffness AE over L, at this point also, it must counterbalance it. So that means our K31 will be equal to minus AE over L. Is that understood? Fair enough. Yeah. Is that a fun total? Please, can you explain uh, that KT1 again? And since this is a um, unit displacement in the horizontal direction, and K31 also is directed in the horizontal direction, and we have gotten AE over here, this one also must balance it. This is AE over here, you must have minus AE over here as well. So since this is positive, say you want to be negative, which is minus AE here, minus AE over here. Is that clear now? Yes, yes, thank you. So, John, so what you're saying okay. now basically is that K11 plus K31 must be equal to zero. Like, is that like a standard? Yes. Yes, of course, because it's a, it's a trust member. We have a trust member, just like I showed you in, um, in the previous, for, for example, this point now, to maintain equilibrium, the force that is acting up here must be the same thing as the force that's acting up here. So if we have a force, because we replace, we replace E with one, and that made this F to become K, that's basically what happened. So the force, I mean, the force acting here must counterbalance this one. Do you understand? So if this is AE over here, the K31, which is in the horizontal, must be minus AE over here. Am I going? Yes, yes, thank you. Okay, so let's go to, um, let's say we are applying two. We are applying a unit displacement in two directions, in the two directions. So we have something like this.
this one. Um, this will be K21. Mm. The K, no, 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 not K21. K22. K1, D22. K4, D22. And K3, D22. Now, if we apply this at this point, the first in the first member is AEE -E over L and is an axial force. Applying a perpendicular force on E, we don't really have so any effect on this K12 and K32. So automatically, K12 will be equal to K32 will be equal to zero. Are we following? Yes. Okay. And also, Please K22 will be equal. This is a member. The member we are considering is what an a horizontal member and it's axial member. I mean, we are considering an axial force. So now, if we are applying the perpendicular displacement of one on it, it won't have any effect on this and this. So that's why the thickness to this one, there is no extension. It's going to still be zero, and our K12 and K32 will be zero. Now, K22 also will be equal to zero. And that's the point of confusion now. I don't really know how to explain that very clearly, why it's like that. But I think to a certain extent, the reason why it's like that is because this force that we are considering on this first member is just an axial force. So if we are applying the perpendicular force, it's not going to have any effect on um, the axial force, which is our subject of concern. So K22 and K42, we also be zero. I know you'll be confused, but I don't know how best to explain it. Do you, do you understand? Yeah, I think I understand. Uh, praise God then. So let's, so if we do the same thing and we apply one, we apply a unit displacement of one at this axial member, that means this K3, okay, let, let, me, let me do that. Um, after this, I won't, I won't do the next one because the four of them also will be zero. There are so many pools here in this, in this, in this topic. Um, so we have... Um, um, so now, the change that we have, we applied a one unit displacement at, look, at point three. So that means it will be K1, due to three, K2, due to three, K3, due to three, and K4, due to three. So if we follow the same pattern as we have been following, our K33 will be equal to a E over L. Now note the difference. When it was at the beginning, we applied at the beginning, it was minus A E over L because it was counterbalancing this one. Now, since this one is where the effect of one, um, this, this is where we applied a unit displacement, then at this point also, it must be counterbalanced. So we can say K13 would be equal to minus A E over L. Then, um, K23 and K4300. So now, if we apply a unit displacement at four in the next one, it goes up. Every one of them will be zero, 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 zero. So I won't do that. We we'll just form a matrix now. Now, 
Um, I want to play it. If we organize it into a matrix, the matrix, the stiffness of that single member will be AE over L. You can organize it yourself. It's, it's not difficult. One, zero, minus one, zero. Zero, 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 minus one, zero, one, zero, 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 zero. So this is stiffness matrix for the single member. Do we get it? Uh, okay. So let's look at that formula. I'm going to be needed in some. Uh, Johnson, like, uh, we have, you have about 10 minutes left. Would that be enough to land up what you are doing? It's not to round up <laughs> stiffness matrix, like, like. No, no, I, I know. I, just, I mean, this will continue some other things. All right. Probably the subsequent feature will. Uh, right. Randu will take it up. Um, okay. Continue from there. All right, sir. Okay. 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 Yeah, so let, let me just try to cover a few other things from cover from here. Here it calls A U over here. So now, if we apply, since we are considering a trust member, the force on this end and the force, this near hand, far hand, let's call them one, two, P, P1, P2. Now, we are dealing majorly with an axial, with axial forces. Even though we may want to say, we have, um, okay, P3, P4, they will be zero. They will be zero. So this um, method is anchored on the fact that P equals K times D. P equals K times D. K is thickness, D is displacement. So, if we now organize that, we can have P, um, P1, you know, the way, we, the way we numbered them before, it was P2, um, P3, and this P4. So, we have P1, P2, P3. P4 will be equal to K A E over L one zero minus one zero 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 minus one zero one zero 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 times D one D two D three D four. Now, there's something to note. Like I said, P2 and P4, they are going to be zero. They have no part to play in the equation. So we are going to say P1, zero, P3, zero, to be equal to AE over L, one, zero, minus one, zero, 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 minus one, zero, one, zero, Zero 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 times there's not going to be displacement in this one. So this um this one D4 because they are appendicular, we are considering axial. So we have D1 zero um this three um P1, P3, AE over L. It might appear confusing, but I'm sure that when you try to do it, when you try to do it, um, 
try to get this, you will get it personally when you try to do it. So let's move from there. I'm coming up. There are so many proofs in this, and that's one challenge throughout this. So that's why you need to be able to, and without the proof, you will not be able to understand the application. But actually, I can apply it and help you to understand to a certain extent. Um, um, as in, I to understand it to a certain extent. So let's, let's just try and move on. I can even do it without teaching the, without teaching the proof now. Uh, let's try let's try one example and see how it goes if you can run to okay. okay so let me just list out the formula but that's that's not a good idea because you won't understand what you are doing you just understand the method. You understand what the, what it means, I and mean, then the foundation and the life. Well, let's try it. Does, does everyone agree that we should try it? I I think we should go to the Is formula. We go to the formula and understand the basics of it. That's what I feel. I don't know about that. As in for today, uh, since you have okay. time constraints now. And for now, just to have an mm. overview before we do the main thing, maybe some other time. Okay. Yeah, let, let, let's move on then. Let's move on. Let's move on with the post. Mr. President, please let me know when my time is up. Ah, almost up. Five minutes more. Wow. Yes, sir. Mm. Ah, come on. We won't learn everything today. Any? I don't think we should actually do anything more because of time. Because anything you start now, you will be rushing. Okay. All right. 